Welcome to part 4 of Let's Play Beams of the Deep by Steve Jackson. At the end of the last part, I was on paragraph 138. Let's reread this as a reminder. Um, the mermen enjoyed your visit, and they crowd around you to wish you good luck. Knowing of your quest, they offer advice. If you feel very brave and lucky, they tell you, you should visit the sea dragon, but he is dangerous. If you need information to help you find your path, you should visit the uh, the sunken cathedral. And if you need good fortune, you should seek out the water sprite, but beware of hungry crabs. They will point out the path towards any of these three. Uh, the sea dragon, 10 to 62. The sunken cathedral, 10 to 202. Or the water sprite, 10 to 363. Okay, we're going to visit the sunken cathedral and turn to 202. You emerge from underground in the middle of a green meadow of soft seaweed. Uh, the water tastes clean and fresh here, like mountain air. In the distance, you can see the grey spires of the sunken cathedral about which you were told. Closer by, you see a magnificent seahorse grazing on the meadow. What will you do? Go directly towards the cathedral, turn 141. Attack the seahorse, turn to 291, or pick some seaweed and approach the seahorse, turn to 166. Okay, we're going to pick some seaweed and, and approach the seahorse and turn to 166. Here we are. Okay. Um, you pick some greens and approach the seahorse, talking to it gently. It looks nervous, but eventually settles down and eats from your hand. What will you do now? Go on your way, turn to 302, attack it, turn to 291, or try to jump on it and ride, turn to 108. Okay, we're going to try and jump on it and ride, and turn to 108. Okay, um, you jump on its back, th throw your arms around its neck, and try to hang on. The seahorse bolts, test your luck, if you're lucky, you stay on, turn to 9. If you're unlucky, you are thrown off, turn to 380. Okay, so let's test our luck. Now, don't forget, we still have that lucky charm, which is just a free go, but I won't waste it yet because my luck is 11, so I'm going to use a luck point and, um, t whoops, and test my luck. So it was 11. So let's do that. So let's roll two dice. 11 or less is what I need. And I get 11. So I was lucky, but that was close. So I've used the luck point, and that's that, but I've kept the lucky charm, which is good. Okay, so we're turning to nine because we were lucky. The seahorse swims madly in circles, bucking and tossing, but you keep your seat. Eventually it quietens, but still rolls its eyes. You pat its nose reassuringly. You find that you can guide it with your knees and that it swims much faster than you do. You direct it towards the cathedral in the distance. When you reach your goal, you dismount and the seahorse swims away. Restore two luck points. Okay, so that's back up to 12. That's good. Um, turn to 269. Okay, 269, here we come. You approach the sunken cathedral and circle it. It is a huge gothic structure, complete with gargoyles on the roof. You swim through the front doors and into the great hall. Your attention is immediately, is immediately caught by the vast stained glass windows lining the hall. They depict many sorts of scenes, some underwater, some on land, and some so odd that you cannot identify them. Now, the curious thing about the windows is this. Although the scenes do not move, they change. Whenever you look away from a window, it is different when you look back. As you look back and forth, you see a picture of yourself in one window. Um, yes, that is uh, used reflexively. Anyway, um, as you were being forced overboard from the pirate ship, a moment later, in another window, you see the same pirate ship from above being eaten by a giant fish. No, as you look closer, 
Uh, you see the fish is an island and the ship is anchored in a cove that forms the fish's mouth. What will you do now? Keep watching the miraculous windows, turn to 37. Look around the cathedral, turn to 339, or leave the cathedral and turn to 390. Okay, there's the cathedral. Okay, um... We are going to look around the cathedral and turn to 339. Oh, there it is. Okay, here we are. It is a huge building. The coral and seaweed growing everywhere only add to its beauty. If you would like to investigate the towers where you saw the gargoyles, turn to 146. If you would rather explore the interior further, turn to 191. Okay, we're going to explore the interior further and turn to 191. Okay, you swim around the interior of the building, seeing nothing unusual except the pictures. Before long you see another picture of yourself. This time you are fleeing from enormous tentacles. If you leave the building, turn to 390. If you would rather stay and look at more pictures, Turn to 367. Okay, we're going to stay and look at more pictures and turn to 367. Now, the next window shows a strange looking man holding a rapier. You swim closer to see what is so odd about him. Suddenly, the window seems to expand around you and you realise you are being drawn into the scene. Turn to 244. Um, here we are. You find yourself facing a man-sized fish, or perhaps it is a very fishy-looking man, in a tall plumed hat. He stamps a booted foot, salutes you with his rapier, and moves towards you. What will you do? Attack him, turn to 79. Ask him what is going on here, turn to 335. Or sit down and hope this illusion will vanish, and turn to 299. Okay, we're going to ask him what is going on here, and turn to 335. After we, after we have a look at the picture. There we go. Okay, 335. Uh, the strange swordsman introduces himself as Cyrano the Swordfish. I am the greatest sword master of all the oceans, he says grandiloquently. Uh, you must have been sent here for lessons. My fee is one black pearl or two gold pieces. Everyone is the better for a lesson from Cyrano. If you do not have a black pearl or two gold pieces, turn to 137. If you have the price, whether or not you want to pay it, turn to 267. Okay, um, we have the price because we have two gold pieces. Um, because I checked there, which we do. I checked there earlier. Um, and we're going to turn to... 267. If you want to take a lesson, turn to 22. If you decline, saying there must have been some mistake, turn to 317. Okay, we're going to pay for a lesson and turn to 22. Um, you pay Cyrano one black pearl or two gold pieces, your choice. Okay, so now we have naught gold pieces. He offers you a drink from his flask and you accept. Now, um, you instantly feel stronger. You regain two stamina points or enough to raise your stamina to ten, whichever is higher. Okay, um, yeah, that puts me up to 22 stamina then. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, because I only... I only needed one. Okay. If you have no sword, he tosses you one. Cyrano salutes you and drops into an on-guard position. Defend yourself, he says. We shall test your skill. Um, you fight. Cyrano, skill 11, stamina 10. The fight is over when one of you has sustained three wounds. If you hit Cyrano three times, turn to 176. If he hits you three times, turn to 46. Okay. So we're fighting Cyrano for three attack rounds. So it's 11 10. I'm going to just make a few more of these. 
There we go. Okay, so Cyrano, skill 11, stamina 10. Okay, so my skill is, I can't remember, it's 10, and his skill is 11. So this is, uh, yeah, not advantageous. Okay, um, for me at the moment. Anyways, let's go. So 11 plus 6 is 17. I get 18. So um, se whoops, 17 to 18. Uh, so that puts him down to eight. So I only need three attack rounds, or he only needs three attack rounds on me. I think that's how it works anyway. Yeah, sustain three wounds. Okay, next. Whoops, the thing isn't in the thing. Um, the dice program wasn't in the recorder thing, sorry. Um, okay, so 11 plus 8 is 19. I get 18, so 18 to 19. Well, no, 19 to 18, sorry. So 19 to 18. So that means he hurts me. Puts me down to 20. Okay, so that's one all. Okay, dice again. Okay, 11 plus 4 is 15. I get 12. So 15 to 12. That's two hits he's done on me. Um, okay, so next one, 11 plus, oh dear, 9 is 20, I get 15, so 20 to 15. That means he beats me. So 20 to 15, there we go. So he, he has... Um, hit me three times, that means that's the end of the battle, and that means I have to turn to 46. So let's go to 46. The fight ends. You may eat provisions if you need to regain strength. I will do. But let's put it down to 9, this will put me up to 20. <clears throat> Um, Cyrano congratulates you on your performance. Of course you did not win. Don't feel bad. You could not be expected to win against the great Cyrano, but you did well. Your skill score goes up by two points and your initial score is also raised by two. Cyrano stamps his foot again and you find yourself back in the open ocean in the middle of a patch of broken timbers. Turn to 111. Okay, so our initial score has gone up by two and... Um, and our skill score has gone up by two. So skill goes up to 12, pretty much. That's that. That's pretty good. Okay, so we're turning to 111. Yeah, this is, um, this is really good. This is... Partly why I like Steve Jackson's books better um, than Ian Livingstone because he's sort of kinder and is. I'm not saying his books are easier, but they have the potential to be easier. You know, where Ian Livingstone's books are just really hard all the way through. Even the easiest route is difficult. Whereas, you know, Steve Jackson's books, if you find a good path, he, he really rewards you. I, I like that. Anyway. Um, you look around you. You are in the midst of some great wreckage, whether of a ship or building, you cannot tell. You are surrounded by logs, stones, and scraps of wood and metal. Out of the corner of your eye, you see a flash of movement. Then you feel a tug at your belt. Uh, you realise that there are little octopuses all around you. Why is octopuses capitalised? It's not a proper noun. Anyway, although at least they have the right plural. Anyway, you realise that there are little octopuses all around you watching you with their great eyes and investigating you with their tentacles. What will you do? Okay, flee, turn to 142, attack them, turn to 290, or offer them some food, turn to 34. Okay, there are the octopuses. Okay, we're going to attack them and turn to 290. Okay. 
Um, you whip out your sword and you whip out your sword and fight. There are dozens of the small octopuses. Uh, you drive them away, but not before one bites you. Test your luck. If you're lucky, turn to 353. If you're unlucky, turn to 82. Okay, so test our luck. Um, yep. Yeah. So our luck is currently 12. Uh, yeah, 12. So this is guaranteed, really. Yep, yeah, so we were definitely lucky. But we have to lose a luck point, yes. So lose a luck point. Let's be down to 11. Okay. Um, so we were lucky and we're turning to 353. Uh, the, uh, the bite is painful but not serious. Lose one stamina point. Puts me down to 19. Whoops. There we are. Um, as you leave, you find that the, you find that the little octopuses have robbed you. Lose one provision and any one item from your bag. Okay. Um, we need to lose an item. So we've lost a provision. Some provisions. And what should we lose? Um, I suppose I have to lose the lucky charm because I need the other things. Can't use a pearl. Don't have any gold left. Okay, I have to lose a lucky charm. Lost, I'll say. Okay, I didn't use that. Never mind, I didn't need it anyway. Um, if you examine the huge coral formation in the distance, turn to 87. If you go in the other direction, turn to 382. Okay. Um, okay, we're going to examine the huge coral formation in the distance. And turn to 87. Um, you swim towards the huge formation of coral. It seems to take the form of a wall surrounding three sides of a huge rock bowl. Um, you enter through the open side and swim towards the inside of the wall. Then looking down, you see enormous eyes looking back up at you. Ten huge tentacles unfold and reach out. Now, the creature below you is the legendary Kraken, or Kraken, whatever. A monster big enough to sink a ship. It's great. Its great beak opens and closes. What will you do? Swim down and fight the Kraken. Turn to 253. Try to hide in a niche in the coral wall. Turn to, no turn to 99. Turn around and make for open water. Turn to 309. Okay, there it is. Okay, we are going to try to hide in a niche in the coral wall and turn to 99. Oops. Um, you dart into a large hole in the coral just ahead of a reaching tentacle. Exploring your refuge, you find that it does not lead all the way through the coral wall. You may eat provisions now or drink a potion. You are safe for the moment, or are you? The Kraken's huge arms are tearing the coral away from the entrance and probing after you. What will you do now? Use the ice crystal if you have it, 10 to 193. Use the potion of the... Vaporous Essence, if you have it, 10 to 278. Use a Tall Fish, 10 to 31. Attack with your Sword, 10 to 253, or none of the above, and 10 to 147. Okay, um, do we need any provisions? No, I'm not going to use any. Anyway, we're going to use the... Yeah, um, we're going to use a Tall Fish and 10 to 31. Oh, there we are. 
Which one will you use? The axe fish, 10 to 214, the saw fish, 10 to 342, or the borer fish, 10 to 179? Okay, we're going to use the saw fish and 10 to 342, because that's what we have. 342, here we are. You release the sawfish, I'll just say I've used it. It expands, becoming a meter, uh, becoming a yard long fish with a saw toothed bill. It darts out of the coral and attacks the kraken. Um, the kraken lashes frantically at it, but the sawfish's bill cuts off the first tentacle that reaches for it. Uh, the battle rages furiously. At last, all is quiet. There is no sign of your sawfish, but the kraken is gravely wounded. It has lost two tentacles and several more are gashed. If you do battle with the kraken, remember that this fight has cost it 10 stamina points and 2 skill points. If you possess another tall fish, you can release it, 10 to 31. If you want to try something different, 10 to 99. Okay, we're going to try something different. Uh, but remember, it's 10 stamina points and 2 skill points. So 10 stamina, 2 skill. I'll write that down, actually, just in case I forget. Um, Kraken has lost 10 stamina and 2 skill points. There we go. Anyway, we're, we're going to try something different and turn to 99. Okay, I've already read that, so I shan't read it again. Um, we're now going to attack um, with our sword and turn to 253. Um, the Kraken makes every other monster you have ever seen look puny. Uh, your only hope comes from the fact that it is not used to opponents as tiny as you. Kraken, skill 10, stamina 30. If you try to escape, turn to 309. If you kill the Kraken, turn to 125. Okay. So... This should be skill 8 and stamina 20 then. Yeah, anyway, yes, yeah, so because it's cost that uh, that stamina point thing. Me, Bob. Anyway, skill 8, stamina 20, Kraken. Here we go. So, Kraken. Skill 8, because the sawfish did damage on it, and 20 stamina. I'll just put what it originally was there. So, it was 10 and it was 30. Yeah, just to put it into perspective. Anyway, so rolling for him first. My skill is 12, isn't it? Yeah, my skill's 12. Here we go. Whoops, I haven't put that in capitals. That's important, isn't it? I knew, I knew you were screaming at the screen there, going, you haven't put the name of the creature in capitals, but don't worry, I fixed it for you. Because I know you have OCD like that. Anyway, so 8 plus 7 is 15. I get 15. So 15 all. So 15 to 15. So no one hurts each other. Okay. Um, 8 plus 8 is 16. I get 15. So 16 to 15. And it still hurt me. So 16 to 15. This is not going well so far. So that cost me two stamina points. Puts me down to 17. Okay, next one. Uh, 8 plus 6 is 14. I get 18. So 14 to 18. Puts him down to 18. Okay, next. 8 plus 10 is 18. I get 20. So 18 to 20. Puts him down to 16. Okay, 8 plus 9 is 17. I get 15 again. So 17 to 15. Takes another two stamina points off, so that puts me down to 15. I better start a new line. So 15. 8 plus 7 is 15. I get 20, so 15 to 20. 
15 to 20. Okay, it's down, now down to 14. Okay, 8 plus 10 is 18. I get 14. So 18 to 14. Hurts me again, of course. Uh, puts me down to 13. Starting to get worried, I, I must say. Okay, here we go. 8 plus... Yep, yeah, definitely worried. 8 plus 11 is 19. I get 22. Thank God for that. So 19 to 22. Sorry about the blasphemy. Whoops. 19 to 22. Puts him down to 12. Um, 8 plus 7 is 15. I get 21. So 15 to 21. Puts him down to 10. Okay, 8 plus 5 is 13, I get 18, so 13 to 18. Put some down to 8. Okay, 8 plus 5 is 13, I get uh, 15, 13 to 15. Put some down to 6. 8 plus 7 is 15, I get uh, 23, 15 to 23, 4, 8 plus 7 is 15, I get 20, so 15 to 20, he likes his 15s, doesn't he? Now the reason for that is, is because his skill is 8, and seven, when rolling two dice, uh, seven is the most common, uh, the most likely number that you'll get because there are six combinations of getting seven for rolling two dice. Six and one, one and six, three and four, four and three, uh, two and five, five and two. That's six out of 36 or one out of six probability. So seven is the most co is the most likely and common uh, pairing for rolling two dice. And of course, his eight is his skill. So eight plus seven is 15. Hence, 15 is quite common. Okay, so that's no coincidence. Anyway, um, or it's not really luck, to be honest. Well, it is partly, but it's... But mainly probability. Anyway, um, 8 plus 5 is 13, I get 22, so 13 to 22. That's 2, okay. 8 plus 8 is 16, I get 19, so 16 to 19, and I didn't jinx myself and I win. Okay, naught, finally. Right, that's the end of him. Right, the Kraken is finished, um, and we're turning to 125. You have killed the monstrous Kraken. Restore three luck points. I shall do. Puts me back up to 12 then. Um, it, sh it should stay. It should say restore up to th restore up to three because I can't restore three. I can only restore one. So that almost implies that I can't restore any because I can't restore three. But I'm not doing that. I'm I'm I'm, I'm not following that logic there because it's detrimental to me. Anyway, uh, this is one tale. This is one tale you will never tell in the taverns. Nobody would believe you. Uh, yes, apart from telling. The fact that you could breathe underwater and all that. Yeah, they'll believe that, but not killing a, a monster. Anyway. Um, you investigate its lair. The Kraken had no treasure. It did not care for gold. But inside the huge shellfish around its rocky hole, you find three black pearls. Okay, so now we have eight black pearls. Above you, the ocean is turning blood red with the rays of the sinking sun. You know you must leave soon. Turn to 382. Okay, last paragraph. Uh, the sun is setting and you know you are running out of time. If you possess an unmelting crystal of ice, turn to 303. If not, turn to 61. Okay, um, 
obviously we have one but i will do that in the next video so thank you very much for watching it's just gone half an hour so i'm just going to put what paragraph i'm on which is 382 don't know why i forgot that so quickly short-term memory rubbish so 382 just in case i forget but fox it usually remembers where i was but just in case it doesn't okay brilliant so yeah i will also use some provisions before i leave as well why not it puts me up to 17 in fact no let's just use one okay so thanks very much for watching in the next video we'll be completing this book so let me just do that okay good yeah we're just about at the end so i'll complete the book in the next video thanks very much for watching and goodbye